Hi, my name is Andy Trout from TakePermission.com. If you're like me, you use services, lots of different services, when you meet with clients. Like you might use a scheduling tool, then you might use a video conferencing tool, then you have a note-taking tool, then you remind them via email. And what this video is going to show you over the next 12 minutes is how to combine all of those things at the same time using one tool. And that is called Zapier. So in this workflow, you're going to have someone create a meeting with you. And then you're going to have a Zoom room created for you to meet with them privately at the appointed time. You're going to have an Evernote note with the information they gave you, as well as the Zoom room number created in your Evernote account. And then you're going to finally email them that information, the person who originally created the meeting. And that's going to happen all in the background just by following this 12-minute tutorial on how to set it up in Zapier. I trust it will be a huge help to you and to your workflow. One reminder is that you can remove these steps if they're not relevant to you. You can also replace these steps with your tools if you happen to use a different tool. You can do it all inside of Zapier. Enjoy. Start a Zapier account, that's Z-A-P-I-E-R. And Zapier is gonna allow you to create this workflow. And I've included it inside of my Zoom course, um, but you also might be seeing this outside of the Zoom course because it does relate to using Zoom with the workflow. So the order in which you create these things inside of Zapier is very important. Zapier is essentially a tool that connects tools that otherwise aren't connected. So for instance, if you use Calendly, which is this tool that I have right here, Calendly does integrate with your calendar. Obviously, that makes sense. But what if I wanted to make sure I have a new Zoom room a Zoom meeting room every time I make a new appointment. Well, that's where Zapier comes in. And what if I wanted to make sure I made an Evernote reminder and I added all the information from the Zoom meeting and the invitation that someone had just created to an Evernote note. So I have that when the meeting starts. And what if I also wanted to send all that necessary information to the invitee via email? Well, I can do that in Zapier. So now let me show you how. You're going to create a new Zap in Zapier, and you need to make sure you're signed up for all these services, obviously. But it's going to ask you what is your trigger. So your trigger is you're going to add the Calendly app. So it'll ask you to which app you want to choose Calendly, and then what action invitee created, and then you're going to name your Calendly account there, and then you can go ahead and test it. Uh, the way you test it is by going and creating a new invite inside of Calendly to make sure that um, it's working correctly. All right, I wanna show you inside of Calendly real quick because it's important that you understand you can add questions to Calendly um, invitations and then use that information in this workflow. So for instance, right now I just have the first and last name, email address, and then I added this phone number, and then topic of our meeting, and then any other details I should know about. If you're setting up your Calendly for the first time, you're actually at an advantage because you can set up all these additional questions in your first type of meeting, which is usually determined by the length, and then just duplicate that meeting and change the length of time. So for this instance, I'm going to go into our 15 minute meeting, and I'm gonna click on here and go to edit. And you wanna look at invitee questions. Now, you're not going to have all these questions. You're going to have to click on Add a New Question. But of course, you want the first and last name and email address, and then you can click on Add a New Question. I'm going to click on the edit of those questions because they already exist. This is the question text, whether it's on or off, whether it's required or not, and then what format do you want to have them answered in? One line, obviously, it's quite simple. Multiple lines is just paragraph spacing. The more room you give people to type something, the more they usually type. You want radio buttons. An example of radio buttons is right here. Radio buttons is when you want them to choose one thing. Check boxes is when you want them to choose multiple things. Let me show you what that looks like. There we are. So they can choose more than one. So for here, there's just what kind of meeting, what's the topic. Uh, I want to be radio questions, radio buttons. And then I have, I always like to ask with any other details I should know about, I ask that question and I hit save and close. And then again, if you go back to your event types, if that was the first meeting you would ever set up, you could just go over here 
And if that was the first meeting you set up, you could go over here to clone and then you could adjust it to a different time. And then you're gonna have all those questions you asked or set up before uh, and they're gonna be cloned. So you don't have to create them for each one. And you're gonna add, click on this plus button and you're gonna add an action. And so the next action is we're going to create a Zoom meeting. So obviously we're gonna choose the Zoom tool and then what's the action? Anytime anyone we want to create a meeting with this Zoom account. And here's the template, and this is important. So first, what is the meeting type? We want a meeting, not a webinar. And then the topic. This is the topic of the meeting. And you're going to pull this information from your Calendly meeting right here. So when you have a Calendly event, it creates certain things uh, that you ask the person for their name, their email address, how long the meeting is, uh, what's the topic of the meeting. We can pull all those and make a title for our Zoom meeting. So the way you do this is you can just assemble whatever title you want. You're gonna click on this drop-down menu and you can see right here, this first uh, action is invitee created. And then we can go in here and we can change or pull from whatever information that the person has entered, right, that we have. And we can make this, this is the headline or the topic or the title of the meeting, all right? And I chose to make the title of the meeting, the person's name, how long it is, and then minutes, and then what the topic of the conversation is, all right? And I have a drop-down menu in my Calendly, and that's how I choose what the topic is. All right, that's important. In your Calendly, you can either have them type in a response or you can have them choose from a drop-down menu. And I chose this right here. So for instance, Bob Johnson, 15 minute, um, uh, and it's one-on-one -on -one coaching, okay? Now when is you're gonna pull from the event start time pretty. So that will create this new Zoom meeting at a specific time uh, in your Zoom software. It'll pull that time, what time zone, and then how long you just wanna choose event type duration. So now we have an event that we have created and we have a Zoom meeting we've created. Let's go ahead and make an Evernote note and reminder. So we're gonna go here and choose our Evernote as our tool and we're going to create a note, that's the next action. Confirm that it is your Evernote account. And then on the template, this looks complicated, but just follow along, it's worth it. Remember, you're gonna set this up one time, it's gonna work the rest of the time. So you're gonna choose what notebook you want the new note to go into, and then what title. I have meeting-Bob Johnson-15 minutes-, and then what kind of meeting is it, one-on-one, -on -one, platform coaching, whatever it might be, dash, and then what time it starts. That's all in the title, all right? And then down here for the content of the note, I just made these bold. So see the bracket B and then bracket, you know, slash B. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but you can use HTML formatting as it says right there. So I have attendee, who it is, email, and then their email, phone number, and then there's phone number slot. Uh, Zoom meeting number, and this is where I can go and I can find this Zoom meeting URL from this step. And so the way you do that is you click on this drop down menu and you see right here, oh, I want to get some information from Zoom. So I choose this right here, then I can add the join URL. What meeting type is it? That's the response right there. And then did they make any comments? And I just pulled that from the Calendly. And then I make a horizontal line with uh, brackets HR. And then I have prep notes. So in this note, I can make some notes as I prepare. And then I do go ahead and add a tag. You can add multiple tags if you new commas in between. Reminder time. Reminder time is pulled from the event start time. And then the reminder done time is the event end time. And you can see that. These are all just options from this drop-down right here. You're going to click on this drop-down and choose those. It really is pretty intuitive once you get inside. And then you save that. The last step is to send an email. 
Now they're going to get an email from Calendly uh, by default, but let's send them an email with all of the other information. Let's go all the way down here to edit the template, and you can see who's, who's it to. Well, it's going to choose who it's to from step one. It's going to send their email. I'm going to send myself, I'm sorry, it's going to, yeah, I'm going to send myself a blind carbon copy. All right, so BCC to myself. So they won't see that. Who's it from? I have to choose what email address it's from if I have more than one email address tied to my Gmail account. What name do I want it to be from? And then what's the subject? The subject of the email is save, semicolon, room meeting information for, and then I, I have that event start time, right? I want this to be an HTML message, and I'm gonna send them a bunch of this information, which you can actually copy and paste if you need to. But I give this some instructions, save this email, it contains a unique room ID link for our meeting. Line break, line break, then time and date, bolded, and then here's the event start time, meeting length, topic, comments, and then the Zoom meeting link. And then I have a reminder, if you have any issues regarding our meeting, please respond to this email. And then I can label it, and then I can save it. So let's see what this looks like once someone goes to enter into a meeting. And we're gonna to choose to set, set up a meeting at 3.30 and click Confirm. So this is the invitee. They would be going here and choosing to confirm a meeting time. And we're gonna say their first name is Bob, last name Johnson. This is their email address. What phone number, in case I need to call you, 8675309. Then what's the topic of our meeting? We're gonna say it's an interview. Any other details I should know about? Um, this will be on live TV and then click schedule event. Now that's the person who's making the appointment with you. Now let's go see the integrations that happened. First, let's check out the Zoom meeting. It should have created a meeting in our Zoom. So let's open up Zoom right here. 3.30 today to 3.45, topic Bob Johnson 15 minute interview. And there's a meeting ID. So you can start, copy, edit, delete, whatever you want to do with that. Here it is right there. Okay. So the first integration did work. Now let's see if it created the Evernote note. All right. About 60 seconds later, I synced my Evernote. And this is what came up. I've got meeting, Bob Johnson, 15 minutes, interview. And here's the time. And then bold right here, attendee, Bob Johnson, bold, email, phone number, Zoom meeting, now I've got a problem here. I needed to put in a break here between these two. So I have to go back and add some HTML. And lastly, it should send an email. So let me open up an email. Remember that setting the reminder is optional because Calendly will automatically you know, create uh, an event when someone schedules it with you on your calendar. But the first thing that someone's going to receive is this save. All right, save this email. It contains a unique ID. So that all looked great right there. And then this is the other email they'll receive is, hi, Bob, I've sent you an additional meeting, additional email with the room ID. So you can send them a little bit of snippet there and you set that up in Calendly. And then here's the answers to their questions. So I hope that workflow was really helpful for you. Just go back, pause, watch it again, step-by-step step, and set it up for yourself. I'm sure that it will work. And pass it on to someone else you think might be helped by it as well. Again, my name is Andy Traub from TakePermission.com. Thanks for watching. God bless and keep shipping. See ya.